Hi, everyone. I'm so excited about what God is going to do today. So we're going to listen to some powerful teachings. And also, don't forget at the end, there's going to be healing and deliverance, but also communion. So I'm going to give you all a minute when we get to the end. I'll remind you again to get your communion, your things for communion so we can all take communion together. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited about this teaching today. I was actually preparing a, a different teaching on the on, about like the priesthood, our priesthood in Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit had me change it to this teaching that I'm going to teach you all today about the river of life and the tree of life and how this all relates to Jesus. Amen. So let's go ahead and get started for today. I'm so excited for this teaching. Let me share my screen with you all. Amen. Okay, so here it is. So we're going to first talk about the tree of life and creation. So when we're reading the Bible in Genesis, we hear about the tree of life, right? And we hear about the tree of good and evil. But what does that really mean? It said that the Lord God formed the human being of dust from the ground and breathed in, into his nostrils the breath of life. And the human became a living being. So dust is a strange thing to form something out of, right? Because dust, you know, it can go straight through your hands. It's not pliable. You can't mold it like clay, for example. But in Hebrew, dust, the word for dust is afar. And so, and it's not clay. So why did God use dust to create humanity, to create Adam and Adam to begin with? Well, to an ancient Israelite, dust is a metaphor for mortality. So let's look at an example. In Job 10, 9, Job asks, will you return me to the dust afar? And there's other verses, too, in Psalms that also have this same idea. So we have this idea usually today that Adam and Eve were immortal from the beginning, and then they lost their immortality after eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. But this isn't true at all. So the purpose actually of the tree of life was to keep Adam and Eve alive in Eden. And when they disobeyed God, they lost access to the immortality that the tree provided. And that is why God said to them, the day you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. The reason is because he knew that if they did that, he would exile them from Eden. And if they didn't have access to eat from the tree, then they would begin to die. So by God creating humanity from dust in the beginning, Humanity always had the potential to die. It was to be from constant eating of the tree of life that they would live eternally. Okay, and this is why God put a flaming sword and cherubim, which is plural, that means two cherubs, in, in front of the tree to guard it. Because if Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they would continue to live forever. Okay, so like I said, this is why God tells Adam and Eve that the day they eat from it, they will die because he will banish them from the garden and they will no longer have access to the tree. And this is why Jesus had to come as the second Adam to give humanity salvation from death. So we can actually see tree of life themes everywhere in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. So it says we have in Genesis 2, 9, and out of the ground, the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Genesis 2, 9. And then we have in Revelation 2, 7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And then we have also in the book of Ezekiel, it says, and on the banks on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water from them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. So here Ezekiel is actually talking about 
if you've ever heard of Ezekiel's millennial temple, Ezekiel is actually seeing visions of heaven. And we have Proverbs 18, 21, which says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. So we can see in the, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are tree of life themes and there are even more, which we're going to talk about today. So let's look at um, Genesis 2, 8 through 10. It says, and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man who he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden, out of the garden of Eden, and there it divided into four rivers. So the water was actually coming from God himself and watering the rest of the garden. So remember this because it's going to be important for when we talk about Jesus later. This is very, very important. So the river that was watering Eden was coming directly from God. So let's talk about God's throne and the tree of life. It says in Revelation, then the angel showed me the river, the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the lamb. So through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healings of the nations. So we can see from this description that the tree and the river are actually tied to God's throne. Because here it says flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb was the river, the water of life. So both from the throne of God and from the lamb was the water of life coming from. So we can see from this scripture that the tree of life is not like a normal tree. So, you know, a normal tree goes through cycles. It's in bloom, then it's out of bloom. In the, in the springtime and summer, it's blooming. In the winter, it's dead. But the tree of life is always in season. And each month, it blooms with different kinds of fruits. So life in the first century was tough for Christians, and they were being heavily persecuted by Rome. So John's letters, they were from the Holy Spirit, and they were to bring hope and comfort to believers for what was to come in the world to come. They call it, as a matter of fact, they call it, in um, Judaism, the Olam Haba, the world to come. So that's what John was trying to, to show and encourage the believers with. So now let's talk about Ezekiel's millennial temple. It says, then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There water was flowing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east for the temple faced east. And the water was flowing from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. That's Ezekiel 47, 1. And you know, if you've ever seen a picture of Jerusalem or if you've ever been to Jerusalem, that there is no water source near the, near the temple mount at all. So what Ezekiel is seeing in his vision is actually called apocalyptic imagery. And in these end time visions, Ezekiel is seeing that the tree of life, God's throne, the temple, and the river of life are all connected. So we can also see in Revelation 2, 7, 22, 14, and 22, 19, that the tree of life is actually the reward of the righteous. So it says the tree is located in the paradise garden, which is Eden, and other early Jewish texts as well. So we're gonna look at we're gonna look at one verse from another. Second Temple text and Second Temple is just the time that Jesus was alive on earth. It's called Second Temple because that's when the Second Temple was standing. So these other early Jewish texts that were around during the time of Jesus, they also compare paradise itself to the tree of life. So let's look at one example. Now these, I want to mention, these are not scripture, but they're just useful for a history lesson to show how the people who lived during this time thought about the tree of life. So here's our example. For you, that paradise is open. The tree of life is planted. The age to come is prepared. Plenty is provided. A city is built. Rest is appointed. Goodness is established. And wisdom perfected beforehand. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Illness is banished from you. What does that say? Oh, and death is hidden. Hades has fled and corruption has been forgotten. Sorrows have passed away. 
And in the end, the treasure of immortality is made manifest. Therefore, do not ask any more questions about the great number of those who perish, for they had opportunity to choose. They despise the most high. So even we can see in this in this text from the time of Jesus is not a text of scripture, like I said, but we can see that in this text, they had like biblical ideas that we can see like where they came from in where like they would have got their ideas from in scripture. So this is ba this text is based on already what it says in scripture, but it's also what they also thought about it. So we can even see in the Dead Sea Scrolls that the tree of life and the river of life were known about. So we're going to look at a t uh, this is also from the time of Jesus, Second Temple Judaism. And we're going to look at a text from the Dead Sea Scrolls and it's called um, the text is called 1Q, and 1Q just means there were several caves in Qumran. So this is cave number one in Qumran, and it's called Hodayo, which means Thanksgiving in Hebrew. So it says, and you, O God, have hedged in its fruit by means of the mystery of strong warriors and spirits of holiness, so that no stranger might come to the fountain of life, nor with eternal trees drink the water of holiness, nor bear its fruit with the plantation of heaven. So the idea is that God made a garden where the tree of life and the river or fountain of life is, and it's protected and only for the righteous. So we can see even in the Dead Sea Scrolls that this same idea is presented as we see in the Bible, as we see in scripture. Now let's talk about the menorah and the tree of life. So someone actually, I want to talk about this because someone asked me a question about the menorah and the tree of life. And so the menorah is actually imaged after a certain type of tree, an almond tree. And we can see that in Exodus 37, 20. And it says on the lampstand itself were four bowls made like almond blossoms, each, each or with the ornamental knob and a flower. Though the tree of life and the menorah are both trees, they're actually different types of trees. So the tree of life has many different fruits each month. The menorah has almonds. So yes, they're both trees. And I'm sure it's symbolic of something of another type of tree in Eden because there are many types of trees in Eden, not only the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There are many types of trees in Eden. But the menorah is actually based on an almond tree and not the tree of life itself. Okay, let's now talk about Moses and the burning bush. So you might be asking, what does Moses and the burning bush have to do with the tree of life? And so we're going to talk about it here. And it says in Exodus 3, 2, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. So like I said, what does a burning bush have to do with the tree of life? The answer that is that even though we read bush here in English, the word in Hebrew can actually also be translated as tree. So it can really be the burning tree. So the fire is the presence of the Holy One, which is God in the tree. So essentially the Holy Divine Presence is sitting in a tree. Now that we've talked about God's throne and the tree of life being connected, this should make sense to you. So we talked about how, you know, God's throne, the river of life, the tree of life, they're all connected. And we even looked at some scriptures about how it says that the river of life and the tree was connected to his throne. So this should make sense why when Moses saw the burning bush that God was li was literally sitting in the tree like a throne because the tree and the tree of life and the tr and the burning bush they're connected because they can both be trees. It doesn't literally mean bush. In the English, yes it says bush, but not in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew it can mean a multitude of different plants. It can mean like bush, it can mean tree. But if we notice the tree of life themes throughout the Bible, then it's more than likely tree. So God tells Moses to take off his shoes. Who else didn't wear shoes? The priests while they were ministering to the Lord inside the tabernacle. So the reason why God told Moses to take off his shoes was because Moses had walked into the Holy of Holies because God's throne and God's direct presence was there. So Moses walked into an Eden space. Right. And we know that Moses was on Mount Sinai. So it's as if Moses walked into Eden on a mountain. So God's original plan actually was for the people to ascend the mountain like Moses did. 
but the people didn't want to. They were fearful. They grumbled against God. They didn't trust God. They committed idolatry. And so they never get to ascend the mountain like Moses did and have that same level of intimacy with God. So now let's talk about Jesus, the river, the throne, the temple, and the tree of life. So did you know that in scripture in the book of John and the book of Revelation, the apostle John actually shows the crucified Jesus as the tree of life, the temple, the river of life, and the lamb. So let's first look at how Jesus shows, sorry, how John shows Jesus as the river of life, okay? So when Jesus was crucified, if we read the book of John, when Jesus was crucified, it says that both blood and water and blood mixed with water flowed from his side. And so to John, that's imagery of water flowing out of the temple, of what the water of life flowing out of the temple. So it says John 1934. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear and at once there came out blood and water. In Revelation 22, 1, it says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Jesus on the cross to John was a mirror of the Lamb in heaven on the throne. So Jesus' crucifixion was essentially his royal enthronement ceremony. So let's talk about, if you notice, Jesus in scripture. Let's talk about the temple next. So when the soldier put his spear into Jesus' side and tore his flesh, this is a mirror or, or the curtain from the Holy of Holies being torn. So through Jesus' sacrifice, we now have access to the Father. And <clears throat> this is why Jesus calls his body the temple. So in John 2, 9, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So Jesus is always referring to himself as the temple. And just like Jesus was torn on the side with the spear, so the Holy of Holies was torn. And now we have access to God because of what Jesus did. So the tree of life. So Jesus is crucified on a cross, which we know is made of wood and wood comes from trees. So Jesus is actually shown as the fruit on the tree of life that we are to eat from. So this is symbolic imagery showing that when we partake in the fruit of Jesus, we will live eternally. So just as Adam and Eve would have lived eternally, would have lived eternally if they were allowed to continually eat from the tree of life. We should continually eat from Jesus every day. And it says in Revelation and around the throne on each side of the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, <coughs> the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And this is going to be really, really important because I'm going to show you all something really, really interesting. Hold on, give me one second, you guys. Okay. Is that is about John and the women. So there were four women who were at the cross with Jesus. And I'm going to show you how this relates to God's throne. So like I said besides John. So like I was saying besides John there are four women. So this is significant because we already know that Jesus sees, I'm sorry, that John sees Jesus' crucifixion as an enthronement of the lamb. We know from scripture, especially Ezekiel, that there are four living creatures that surround God's throne. So actually the four, the four women <clears throat> who are at the cross are actually mirrored as the four living creatures that are surrounded that are surrounding the throne. So Jesus is crowned with the crown of thorns as the lamb who has the seven horns because he is worthy because of his wounds to open the scroll. So that's why when people say, oh, women, you know, they have no role. They're actually, yeah, John actually sees them as the four creatures surrounding the throne. 
And we can see that because of the parallels in the Bible. Amen. Wow. That's incredible. And it's funny how I got choked up, right? I started coughing right before I, I got to this because the enemy is really after women and he doesn't want them to know their worth. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I hope this, thank you. So I hope this really blessed you. And now that I did this teaching, <clears throat> That's why, too, I think the Lord, I was planning on doing communion, which we still are still going to do. And God just wanted me to talk about the river of life, you know, that, that flowed from Jesus. And that's why he wants us to take communion. Amen. And I even believe through taking communion, a lot of people are going to be healed. A lot of people are going to be delivered. A lot of people will receive their breakthrough. People will get set free. Amen. Because when we're we're Jesus told us to do this commandment in remembrance of him. And this is why communion is so powerful. Amen. Because it's like a river of life that flows from Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So now let's get to the prayer and then the deliverance. And then, like I said, at the very end, after I do the prayer and deliverance, we're going to take communion. All right. So one moment, please, you all. Let me find, let me get my, let me get my communion stuff and I'll be right back. Let me see. Where's my communion? <clears throat> okay. All right, so now let's do the prayers. Amen. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I pray for my sister, oh Lord, my sister who needs divine help. Lord, I pray that you help her in the name of Jesus. I pray that you watch over her. I pray that you protect her in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Kathleen. Father God, I pray that you bless her womb in the name of Jesus. I pray that every curse of barrenness be broken off her womb in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, and I pray for her husband, Victorious, to get stronger and deeper in the Lord. Father God, I pray that you will hear this intercession and request for my sister in Christ, Kathleen. Bless her womb. Let every curse over her womb of barrenness be broken by the power of what Jesus did on the cross. Father God, I pray, Lord, that the blood and water that flowed from Jesus' side, Lord, will infiltrate Kathleen's body and bring healing to her and her household in Jesus' name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Alyssa. Father God, I pray that her family fall in love with Jesus, her husband, her children, and her brother, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you will encounter them and do what only you can do, Father God, in their lives in the name of Jesus. Father God, I also pray for Alyssa for divine and supernatural direction on what she should on what she should do next in her life. Give her wisdom, Father God, in Jesus' name, and show her your will for her life. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Naomi. I pray against all thyroid issues in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I pray that every curse be broken off of her in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray against every demonic spirit that's causing Hashimoto's disease in the name of Jesus. Father God, I break now every generational curse off of her bloodline of Hashimoto's disease, of autoimmune disorders in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that every demon that's trying to stop her, Lord, every demon that's trying to keep her from preaching your word, from doing ministry, Lord, that you would uproot from her body, even right now, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I pray for a miracle for Naomi in Jesus' name. I pray creative miracles into her body in the name of Jesus and let the power of the Holy Spirit touch her even now in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray that that evil spirit, that that evil disease break off of her now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I also pray for Dominique. I pray for healing for Dominique and I pray for Dominique for unity in her family in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that you will bless her household in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will cover her household in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And we thank you, Lord, for what you've done in her life so far. And I pray, Father God, that you will continue to bless Dominique in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I also pray for Penny. 
I pray, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, against every spirit of cancer. We pray against every spirit of death in the name of Jesus. We command all cancer from his pancreas and from anywhere else where it's been in his body to be uprooted by the blood of Jesus. And Father God, we pray against every demon of pancreatic cancer in Jesus' name. Father God, release your healing touch right now, please, to Penny's husband in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we know it doesn't matter how progressed the cancer is, that you are the God of miracles. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you show yourself to them as Yahweh, the creator God, Lord, who, who is the creator. Lord, you can create body parts. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for creative miracles in Penny's husband's body right now in Jesus' name. We pray that the Holy Spirit will overshadow him, Lord. You created us, Lord, from the dust. Lord, you created us out of nothing at all. So, Father God, we ask right now in Jesus' mighty name that you will create a new pancreas, Father God, in Penny's husband in Jesus' name. And we pray that the doctors will be astounded and that your son, Jesus Christ, will be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we also pray for Anthony for divine direction and breakthrough and provision in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray that you bless him in everything that he does in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that you give him wisdom and that you, we, that you help him and, and teach him, Lord, to hear your voice so that he knows the, your will for his life in Jesus' name. Father God, we also pray for Jenny, Lord. Father God, we pray for her twins, Lord. We pray against that demonic spirit of autism in Jesus' name. And we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you heal their minds, Lord. Father God, we pray against any hormonal issues of their mind in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray that you break them, Lord, free of every chain and every shackle, Lord, that's keeping them bound in the name of Jesus. We pray that every curse be broken off of their family and off of their life in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And we pray that you bless them completely, bless her household in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Show them your love, Father God, and show them your power in Jesus' name. Father God, I also pray for my brother in Christ, Lord, for financial breakthrough, Lord. He needs to provide for his family. I pray that you will provide for his family in Jesus' name. I pray financial provision for his family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, you provide for widows. You provide for the poor. You provide for those who cannot provide for themselves. So I pray that you will bless him, Heavenly Father. Bless his finances. I pray that he will receive a, a good paying job, Lord speedily that someone will bless him lord even right now as i'm praying lord that he will even receive a phone call where someone says i don't know why but the lord has told me to give you this amount of money so i just pray that you bless him lord in jesus mighty and precious name father god i also pray for my sister for her marriage i pray against all spirits of adultery that are coming from her husband in jesus name father god we ask that you break break off from him every demon lord this making him want to commit adultery. We pray in the name of Jesus that you change his heart, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray right now against every spirit of Jezebel in her marriage in Jesus' name and every strange woman that's tried to come against her marriage in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray against every spirit of chaos and destruction that's been in her household in the name of Jesus. And we pray against mental anxiety that she's been feeling and torment that she's been feeling because of these things in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, please turn around her marriage for the better in the name of Jesus. And please protect her, Lord, from just please protect her, Lord, from the influence of Jezebel, Lord, and help her husband to come out of that influence in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Please, Lord, do a miracle for their marriage in Jesus' name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ. Her daughter needs to find a good job, Lord, a good paying job in Jesus' name, that she's able to keep the job. I pray for blessings and for favor over her daughter's life in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray with, that you do what only you can do, Lord. Bless her financially in Jesus' name. Let her struggles come to an end by the power of Almighty God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Please, Lord Jesus, bless her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, I also pray right now for my sister in Christ. Um, that her brother Garcia will spend more time with God in Jesus name. I pray for healing and breakthrough also in his health. And I pray for my sister in Christ's parents, Lord, please bless her parents. Please bless them financially, Lord. Please bless them in the area of their health, Lord, in Jesus name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ that you will heal her, heal her sister's wounds and that her sister will be in her right mind. And Father God, also please bless my sister in Christ's son, Lord. 
Bless him, Father God. Help him in school, Lord. Pray against every spirit of autism that may be afflicting him in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, we pray against every, every demon that's causing nightmares in his life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray, I just thank you for what you've done in my sister's life. And I ask that you should bring them from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ right now, that you heal her stomach, all stomach issues. Lord, I pray that they will leave her now in Jesus' name. All demons that are causing stomach issues, leave now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray right now that you bring healing into her body in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray that your power and your anointing will touch her stomach and heal her completely from all diseases, from all infections in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, I pray, Father God, that the that the blood, Lord, that flowed from the side of Jesus will infiltrate her body and completely heal her from all stomach issues in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, I pray right now in, in Jesus' name for my sister. She's dealing with her daughter is transgender, Lord. I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will encounter her daughter and bring her to Christ. Father God, encounter her in a way well, she will know it to you. Show her your love, Lord, in Jesus' name. Please show her your love and bring her to you. Bring her to your son in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray right now that she encounter you in a way, Lord, that brings her completely to you, Lord, because we know, Lord, that no one is too far gone to come to you. Father God, I also pray against all trauma. I pray that you will heal my sister in Christ's heart and her daughter's heart, Lord. I pray against any religious trauma, Lord, that her daughter may have experienced, and that's why she's staying away, Lord. She's staying away from you. I pray that you will heal her completely in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray that you will bring her to repentance. I pray that you will protect her and that she will reach out to her family to let them know that she is okay. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ. Her mother's health is bad, Father God. I pray, Lord, right now in Jesus' name that you bring healing to her mother, that you bring refreshing to her mother. Father God, in your word, it says that Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. And Jesus, you rebuked the fever and the fever left her. So we pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that those health problems that my sister in Christ's mother is experiencing, that they be rebuked now in the name of Jesus and that she began to feel better, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, please, we ask that you will bless her mind, body, and spirit entirely in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, for her liver enzymes to be normal, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We rebuke the devourer from her life. We rebuke every plan of the enemy against her health in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, May all her liver enzymes be back to normal in Jesus' mighty name. May all her lab results show normal in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray against imbalanced hormones in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that you will make her hormones normal in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And Father God, let every disease, Lord, that comes with that be banished from her body in Jesus' mighty and precious name because of what Jesus did on the cross. Every, every spirit of infirmity come out of her body now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, we pray also for her cholesterol, that it be regulated in the name of Jesus. Father God, touch her with your healing anointing, we pray in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, who is re experiencing rejection. Father God, we pray against every spirit of rejection. We pray against every spirit of abandonment. We pray against every orphan spirit, Lord, that she is experiencing in her life. Lord, we ask that you heal her heart, Lord. Heal her from self-hate in Jesus' mighty name. And we rebuke every spirit of self-hate now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of abandonment, leave her now. Spirit of rejection, leave her now in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And Father God, I pray and I ask you that you put people in her life that love her and that you show her your love to her, that you show your great love to her, Lord, where she can feel it tangibly. <clears throat> Father God, I pray for my brother in Christ that he's being mistreated, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will fight for him in Jesus' name, that he will not experience mistreatment anymore in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask also that he not forsake the call of God on his life in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you strengthen him with your mighty right hand. I pray that you encourage him, Lord, that you strengthen him in Jesus Christ, Father God. <clears throat> I pray for divine strength, Lord, over him in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I also pray for my sister. 
Father God, her daughter has breast cancer. We rebuke every spirit of breast cancer now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name, and we ask that your healing anointing, that your healing balm be applied to her, to my sister in Christ's daughter's body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray against all, all hormonal issues in her daughter's body in Jesus' mighty name that are causing breast cancer. We break every generational curse of breast cancer that came into her life. Every spirit of they came in of breast cancer that came in through rape or molestation. We rebuke those spirits now in Jesus' name, and we command that breast cancer to shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Father God, that no spirit of death or destruction will have dominion over her in Jesus' mighty name. But Father God, we pray right now that you bring complete healing to her body in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you are our healer. Lord, you are our deliverer. Lord, show yourself as Yahweh Rapha to them, the Lord who heals, Father God. It's you and you alone, O oh Lord, who will get the glory in Jesus' name. Father God, we also pray in Jesus' name for my sister in Christ that her family member will not be put into a nursing home in Jesus' name. Father, find some. Uh, we ask that you find some other way, Lord, for her family to be taken care of and that they will not be put in a nursing home, Lord, but that she'll be able to stay in her own home in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Please, Lord, look out for your people, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And we also pray for her brother that he will stop doing drugs and surrender his life to Christ. Father God, we pray against every spirit of addiction. And we pray right now that her brother will be brought, Lord, to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father God, and also you all, if you're dealing with any of these things, you hear me calling out, you can receive it as well. Amen. Father God, also we pray right now, Lord, for my sister in Christ, that you'll give her wisdom on who to marry, Father God. Let the enemy not deceive her on who she should marry, Father God. We pray against all false dreams, Lord, where she's being married to someone, Lord, who she shouldn't be married to. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you choose her spouse, Lord, and that you reveal to her who her spouse should be in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray that no evil spirit, Lord, will tempt her or trick her into thinking someone who is not her God-ordained spouse is her spouse. Father God, we pray this in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And Father God, we pray right now that you bless her and keep her in the name of Jesus and help her to make wise and godly choices in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, we also pray for our sister right now for her overactive thyroid, Lord. We pray that all thyroid issues come to an end in the name of Jesus and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray against every evil spirit that's causing thyroid issues. Father God, we ask that your healing anointing touch her right now in Jesus' name and that her thyroid go back to normal in the name of Jesus. We break every generational curse off of her body and off of her life in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, we pray against all headaches that are coming from an overactive thyroid in the name of Jesus. We pray complete healing of her mind. We pray complete healing of her thyroid in Jesus' mighty name. And we command all pain to leave her body now in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray, Lord, that she will be able to relocate to a place, Lord, where you have called her to be and that she will have every and everything in her life will be in order in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Father God, I also pray for my brother that you will bless him financially in the name of Jesus. He wants to provide for his family, Lord. He is a pastor, Lord. He is pastoring, Lord, your people. But Father God, we pray right now, Lord, that people will begin to donate to his ministry in Jesus' name. We pray right now, Lord, that he, that he will be blessed financially in the name of Jesus, Lord. Help him find some way, Lord, that he can provide for his family, Lord, while still being in ministry, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Give him, give him ideas, Lord. Give him divine wisdom, we pray in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Kimberly, Heavenly Father. We pray that you bring healing into her stomach in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the healing that she has already experienced, and we pray for more healing in her stomach, more healing in her intestines, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we pray for creative miracles in Kimberly's body, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, we also pray over Kimberly, Kimberly protection, and we pray for her, Lord, for her, for her friend, Lord. She has a friend, Lord, who's who's an older woman, Lord. We pray protection also for that older woman, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Father God, we also pray against all witchcraft that she is experiencing, all voodoo. We pray against that spirit of voodoo now in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you bless them and protect them and heal them in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Dominique. I pray for healing and unity in her family in the name of Jesus. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ. I pray, Lord, that you give her the desires of her heart in Jesus' name. We pray that you bring salvation, Lord, to her loved ones who do not know Christ yet in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for healing and deliverance in her body and in her life in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray also, Lord, that you draw her more near to you, Lord. She prays for more intimacy, Lord. She wants more intimacy with you, O God, in Jesus' name. So I pray that you give her that intimacy, Lord, that she's been desiring of you for so long in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Rose, for healing in her lungs. Father God, I pray creative miracles in Rose's lungs, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, and for pain in her bottom, Lord, and for plantar plantar fasciitis and, and, in her, and pain in her heel spur in Jesus' name. Father God, everywhere where Rose needs healing in her body, I pray that you do creative miracles in her body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we pray right now in Jesus' mighty name that you will hear these prayers and that you will answer them. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, let I pray in the name of Jesus that since Jesus is the fruit from the tree of life, that she will be healed, Lord, by that fruit in Jesus' mighty name, the fruit of Jesus Christ. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Rachel, Father God. We pray, Lord, that God will have, Lord, have your way and have your will. And Father God, we pray right now that you reveal your plans for Rachel's life to her in Jesus name, Lord. Bless her in everything that she does, Lord. Reveal, reveal what you want her to do in her life to glorify you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray this. And we pray that you bless her marriage, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I also pray for my sister Fatima, Father God. She's being attacked, Lord, on her health and finances in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you bring healing to her body, that every curse be broken off of Fatima's life in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that every curse be broken off her finances that's keeping her from, from being able, Lord, to to afford things, Lord, that she needs in Jesus' name. Father God, let every curse be broken off of her health and finances and life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. Father, let yourself be glorified in the testimony that she will have, Lord, that you have answered this prayer in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Cheryl, Lord. Lord, she wants her family to have salvation, Lord. Father God, <clears throat> we know, Lord, that your word says that you want all people to be brought to the knowledge of Christ. So we pray, Lord, in accordance with your word, that her family, Lord, will receive salvation. We pray for, for Cheryl to have boldness, Lord, that she will be able to witness to her family and they, would, they will begin to listen little by little by little until they are brought to full salvation in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Father, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Veronica. Father God, we ask that you heal her body completely, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over Veronica in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, we pray in Jesus' name that you activate that prophetic gift in Veronica, Lord. Lord, we pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you activate her in the prophetic in Jesus' name. If she's not already in the prophetic, and if she is, Lord, move her to a higher level in the prophetic, we pray in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Heal her completely, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Pamela, Lord, for healing of nerve problems, stomach problems, and anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Let all nerve problems be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, heal, heal every cell, heal, every, heal all her central nervous system, her peripheral nervous system. Heal her completely in the name of Jesus. Let every spirit of anxiety and depression leave her now in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we ask, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, that you heal her mind as well, Father God. Bring her perfect peace in Jesus' mighty and precious name. <clears throat> Father God, I also pray for my brother in Christ, George, against all witchcraft attacks in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, we pray against all types of witchcraft in Jesus' name. Father God, we know that Jesus, that Jesus is stronger than every type of witchcraft. <clears throat> So, Father God, right now we pray for protection over George in Jesus' name and that no witchcraft will have dominion over him. We command every spirit of witchcraft to go from his life now in Jesus' name. 
Leave him alone. Go from his bloodline now. We break every witchcraft curse off of him now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will set him loose and free from all forms of witchcraft. Father God, I also pray for my brother Ben, Heavenly Father. Bless his wife. Bless his family in Jesus' name, Lord. Whatever they are hoping and needing from you, Lord, I pray that you will provide for all of their needs. Provide for them financially. Provide for them physically. Any health problems that they have, Lord. Heal them, Lord, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. We pray all these things. Amen, amen, amen. Father God, I pray for my brother Emmanuel, Lord. We pray for peace in his life, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Bless him in every aspect of his life. Lord, whatever he needs from you, we pray that you will provide it, Lord. We pray that you will set him free from all traps of the enemy, Lord, in Jesus' name. From all demonic torments, set him free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And Father God, we also pray for my sister in Christ, Angie, Lord, for her son, Alfonso. Father God, we pray right now that you heal Alfonso from all cancer in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now against that brain tumor. We curse that tumor to the root right now in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, let that tumor be cursed in the name of Jesus and let it shrivel up and die in Jesus' name. Father God, we pray right now against every spirit of cancer in Jesus' name. We pray, Father God, that you blow out of your mouth, Lord, fire, and that that spirit, Lord, that's causing cancer will catch fire and burn into ashes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray that you bring healing, complete healing into his body. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray for creative miracles, Father God, in Angie's son's body in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we ask that you will show yourselves to them as Yahweh Rapha and also as Yahweh, the, cre the God of creation, Heavenly Father. Show yourselves to them as the God of creation. We pray for creative miracles in her son's body in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we also pray against any cancer returning, Lord. Once he is healed, we pray that it will never return again in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, we also pray that you heal him from memory and from memory loss, Lord and movements in his body, which he can no longer do. Father God, we also pray that his appetite will return in Jesus' name, and then he'll be able to eat normal in the name of Jesus, and that he'll be able to speak normally in Jesus' name. Father God, when things seem impossible for man, they are possible with you, Heavenly Father. And we pray right now in Jesus' name for a miracle for Alfonso in Jesus' mighty and precious name, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit alone, Lord, we pray for this miracle. In Jesus' name. Father God, I also pray for my sister in Christ, Esther. Lord, she wants breakthrough for herself and her family in Jesus' name. And so we pray for that breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for my sister, Aline. Father God, we pray for health. We pray for her health and we pray that you bless her financially and her friends and family in Jesus' name. Bless her, Lord. We pray against every demonic spirit that's causing infirmity in her body or infirmity in the life of her family or friends, Father God. And we ask that you touch them with your healing anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ, Kathy, that you bring healing into her legs in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, it says in your word that when Peter and John went to the temple, Lord, they said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene walk. And they, and the, the, he began to get up and walk. So, Father God, right now in Jesus mighty name, we pray the power of God into Kathy's legs, Lord, and that she be, will be able to get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we also pray for my brother in Christ, Michael. We pray that you'll bless him, Lord. He loves you, Lord. And we pray that you'll help him to find a home church. We pray that you'll help him to find believers who he can connect to, Lord, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I also pray for my brother in Christ, John. Lord, I pray that you will heal him, Lord, and that his wife will conceive a child in Jesus' name. Bless them, Lord, and heal them in Jesus' name. Father God, in your word, in your word with Miriam, Lord, when she had leprosy, Lord, your word says that Moses interceded for Miriam and all he said was, Lord, heal her. That was it. It was a simple prayer. Lord, heal her. And she was healed in, in that moment. She was healed. Not she was healed in that moment, but it happened over time. Amen. So, Father God, even though we might pray simple prayers like Lord, heal them. Lord, we ask that you hear this prayer, Lord, and that they will be healed, that they will begin to experience their healing. Even if it's little by little, even if it's over time, Lord, we ask that people receive healing in their bodies in Jesus name. 
Father God, I pray for my sister in Christ for protection and against all spiritual attacks of the enemy in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I pray for my sister, Jessica. We break off every spirit of delay off of her life in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray against every spirit of stagnation and delay and setback in Jesus' mighty name. We break off every curse of delay and stagnation and setback. We break every generational curse off of her life and off of her bloodline in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray, Lord, that she will begin to move forward in the spirit, Lord, with nothing holding her back in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Father God, I also pray for my my sister in Christ against witchcraft. Father God, we pray against every spirit of barrenness. Father God, we ask that you will bless her womb in Jesus' mighty name, that all curses will be broken off her womb because Jesus came as the second Adam to break all the curses, Lord, that came from Adam and Eve disobeying you. We pray right now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty and precious name, Lord, that she will conceive a child. Lord, we pray against that evil spirit right now that's telling her in dreams that she will not bear children, that she will not conceive in Jesus' name. Father God, we pray that you bless and heal every part of her reproductive system in Jesus' name. Father God, we pray right now against any blockages in her uterus, any demonic blockages in her ovaries, all demonic blockages in her fallopian tubes in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray that your anointing be in every part of her reproductive system in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that she will not be barren any longer in Jesus' mighty name and that you will bless her with a child, Lord. Father God, it says in your word that you have commanded man to be fruitful and multiply. And that was the command. That was not a suggestion. So, Father God, because of your word, because of what you have said in your word, we pray that it will be done. We pray for a creative miracle in her body and that she will bear a child in Jesus name. And we pray against every stubborn demon, Lord, that's tormenting her life in the name of Jesus. We command them to leave. We break every demonic contract and covenant, Lord, that that evil spirit has made with her in a dream in Jesus mighty name. And let them let your people go in Jesus name. And Father God, we also pray for my sister in Christ, Lord, that you bless her, Father God, that you bless her, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, against every evil spirit that's influencing her husband, Lord, to commit adultery. <coughs> and Father God, we ask right now, Lord, we pray against every spirit that's making her husband despise her in Jesus' name. Lord, bless her and keep her safe in the name of Jesus. Okay, now let's take communion together. Amen. And I really believe that through this communion, that people receive their breakthrough. Amen. People receive their deliverance. Like I said, people receive their healing in Jesus name. God commanded me to take communion with you all and I was not planning on it. Amen. So when God tells you to do something, we have to be obedient because God is going to move. Amen. Okay. So let's take our communion together right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done here today, Lord. We glorify your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice on the cross, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for this in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray, Lord, that as we take this communion together today, that we will receive healing, deliverance, miracles, breakthrough, Lord, and that you will bless us abundantly in Jesus' mighty and precious name. We pray all these things, and we pray that everything we did here today glorified your son in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you all, we've been on, we've been live now for about an hour, which is a little bit longer than we usually go. But amen. Jesus was glorified. The enemy tried to stop us for a little while, but we finished. We made it. We were able to take communion and I was able to pray over everyone who sent me a prayer request. Amen. So we'll do this again next week. I'm not sure what the topic will be. The, I'll let the Lord lead me on what I should talk about. But I'll see you all next week. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone who also prayed for me as well. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you all. And I will see you all next week. All right. Bye-bye.